In this lecture, uh, we are going to discuss on another topic of interest that is pumps and turbines. This is another class of machinery one will come across in uh, major chemical process plants, steel plants, power plants, uh, uh, ships, aircrafts. So, we have to see how we can find out the major faults in such pumps and turbines through vibration signature analysis, through motor current signature analysis, maybe at some times through wear debris analysis as well and many a times of course, uh, NDT inspections are done on such uh, critical machine components like aircraft turbines and so on. So, uh, I will classify these uh, pumps and turbines based not on the principle of their operation, but rather on the type of fluid they pump, or type of fluid they use. Okay. As you know, pump is a mechanical device where when we give in some sort of an energy in the form of an external energy to give certain output energy to the pump in terms of pressurizing the fluid, so that it can gain much uh, potential. So, in the pump capacity, the power of the pump gamma q h, okay, wherein gamma is nothing but rho g, q is the discharge rate <coughs> and h is the height through which this fluid is to be pumped up. Okay. And uh, this is a requirement because I need to develop a certain pressure head in a pump, okay, because it can flow. A pressure head is required in the pump. So, these pumps are usually driven by a motor through a coupling and then we have the pump. So, this pump can again be positive displacement or could be dynamic. So, in dynamic they could be axial, they could be centrifugal and so on. And the most <coughs> common pump which you will see is the centrifugal pump. And you must many of you would have seen this centrifugal pump used for pumping water in the fields in uh, the uh, they produce uh, a certain water at a particular flow rate and a pressure, so that we can irrigate the lands. Lot of chemical process plants, you know, if you talk about a distillery, a refinery, there are lot of pumps. Okay. I imagine the uh, pumps which we were putting it uh, under the ground okay, to pump out crude oil from the bed of the ocean, okay. underneath the bed of the ocean, crude oil pumping, pumping of water, domestic supplies, pumping of water, uh, firefighting, etcetera, chemicals in refineries. So, they all require pumps and this pumps have to be um, powered. Another pump is the pumps which are submerged in liquid, the sewage pump, pump inside pipelines large pipelines wherein we have axial flow pump pumps, okay, pumping of crude oil etcetera. So, these pumps can have defects okay, and then how do we rectify them. Another important application is in uh, nuclear plants. Think of a nuclear plant. Okay. Think of a nuclear plant how do I monitor the health of such machines or such pumps. So, the candidates uh, uh, this is what uh, I'm, we are going to focus on in the nuclear plants and then submersible pumps. I 
I will pose a challenge to everybody right now. The fact that we have studied about vibration monitoring in details in this course. Okay. But can they be applied in nuclear plants and submersible pumps? Because to install a transducer, I cannot go inside a nuclear plant. I cannot go under underground and mount a transducer in a submersible pump. So, these are issues okay. and we will see how this can be done. The pump diagnosis in a nuclear plant and submersible uh, submersible sorry pumps. Another important machinery which we will study in this course are turbines. Usually turbines again by the type of fluid we will have two types one is the steam turbine which is there in almost all the land based uh, power plants thermal power plants in our country. Of course, we have the hydro power plants where we have uh, hydro or turbines like the Kaplan or the Francis turbine or even sometimes the Pelton wheels. So, we, we will uh, briefly talk about the hydroelectric turbines uh, as well. And then of course, <coughs> the gas turbines in aircrafts, gas turbines are used to power naval vessels and even sometimes small gas turbines of you know, 20 megawatt capacity are used in captive power plants in many industries run by gas turbines to for generating electrical power. <coughs> so, wherever the tub tub uh, sorry uh, turbines are used to <coughs> excuse me turbines are used to generate power what happens the turbines rotate and they are coupled to an electric generator. And if you if you talk about uh, large power plants, you know, steam power plants, you know, 200 megawatt or 400 megawatt super thermal power plants, etc. They they generate, you know, they have turbines running on steams, um, uh, and these turbines rotate, and the rotor of the electric generator, and then an AC current is produced. By the way, I should tell you the when we when we talk about the frequency of uh, the current which is being generated in, in, uh, in our country, this is you know uh, this time period corresponds to 1 by 50 seconds, because our supply is 50 hertz. So, the speed of the rotation of the rotor of the electric generator is governed by the turbine. So, there are a lot of control mechanisms as to so that I gen I do not produce a current supply frequency less than 50 hertz or greater than 50 hertz. So, I have to be produce the electrical supply frequency F supply at 50 hertz and that is my primary requirement of a power plant okay, with of, of course, uh, continuously and so on. But <coughs> these turbines you know when you are talking about 200 or 400 megawatts, they are very very large in size, and these rotors are so heavy that they are supported on hydrodynamic bearings. Hydrodynamic bearings. Okay, and there are a lot of mechanisms so that we operate them at stable frequencies, stable frequencies, by frequencies I mean rotating speed and so if I if I give in more steam it is going to generate at a rotate at high speeds, but then this has to be governed. So, I will not go into the uh, controlling mechanism of such uh, system such power plants, but it is pretty complicated. We have discussed about the individual machine components like 
rotating shafts on uh, bearings, shaft carrying uh, gears, shaft carrying pulley, shaft having missile alignment. But when I talk about a turbine or a pump, okay, maybe a, how do we monitor the conditions of a turbine? So this is not a single component. So if you think of a turbine. Uh, let us talk about the turbine first and then uh, maybe I will come to the pump later. So, in a turbine what are the important characteristics? Large rotor supported uh, supported on general bearings. Okay. And usually all the phenomena of course, you know, in, in the turbine there could be blade vibrations, there could be blade problems, there could be casing problem, casing defects because of high heat there could be you no know, creep etcetera, there could be seal problem. because we would not like the seals uh, to leak and so that the steams you know um, pass out through the shafts. So, in fact, the seals are mounted something like this as a rotating component okay, which is uh, tightly and the seals are actually given here they are spring loaded and then they can have another component here. Okay. And this is the shaft which can be which will be having the uh, shaft could be rotating, it can be carrying compressor sets and so on. And of course, as I was telling you right in the beginning, if I, if I go back here, this uh, figure here. So, turbine, the first place would be of course, to put vibration signal signals at all locations. By all, all locations, what do I mean? Of course, all the bearing locations, all the foundation locations. Okay. These, are, these are all the locations where you can mount transducers and so on. But the problem in nuclear plant is that this is not accessible. The problem in submersible pump is that pump is not accessible. So, that is something we will discuss later on and the normal method of vibration signal monitoring is uh, well understood by now. So, whenever we have a machine, we just install the transducers and find out the characteristics. First of all, in the time domain itself based on the ISO standards, we see whether the levels are within the allowable limits as per the standards as per the power of the machine that is number one. And if we want to diagnose faults in the turbine, what we do through vibration monitoring is install the um, sensors at all the bearing locations or the foundation locations and then do a signature analysis to find out unbalanced missile alignment, gear defects, um, blade uh, missing blade etcetera. The techniques of FFT, substem analysis uh, and OLAP detection can be used that is good enough. But I was telling you for the case when this turbine itself is not accessible. So, for example, a nuclear plant. So, how is the health monitoring in turbines in nuclear plant done?
First of all, because of high radioactivity, we are not allowed to go inside the plant. So, they are permanently installed installed sensors. By sensors, I mean usually in such turbines at the general bearing end, usual practice is to put some sort of an non contacting type eddy current probe at this is actually at 45 degrees. x y and you can do a lot of orbit analysis to defect and we had discussed about orbits uh, in one of our earlier classes to find out the defects in the, but these sensors can be eddy current can also be vibration transducers like accelerometers. The question is suppose a nuclear plant is made and you are not supposed to go inside it and it has a life of about you know, 20 or 20 years. So, what do we do? They put lot of extra transducers extra or redundant transducers are installed suppose and then all you have is a uh, because if you if you look go to a nuclear plant they are actually in a containment building okay and then all the machines are there so all you can have is these sensors signals coming out from such a plant and then you can do the analysis, virus analysis. But another important technique of finding out faults in turbines is through what is known as <coughs> motor current signature analysis. And this is very, very helpful for fault detection in submersible pump and then in uh, even in gas turbines. I will give you an example. I mean, I, I believe we have talked about motor current signature analysis in submersible pumps for the fact that in a submersible pump which is under the ground, which is rotated by a motor, and then all we require is an Hall effect current sensor, and then we can have an A to D process, and then we can have an signature analysis. And this could be under the ground, so we do not worry about. The same is true for uh, turbines. In fact, if you think of the marine propulsion system,
we have what is known as the gas turbine generator so the turbine which is a gas turbine is driving a generator and this generator is actually used to power devices in the ship and this is the generator and this is the coupling so i will i will show you few pictures of we did a condition monitoring on a gas turbine this is the gas turbine and this is coupled to a uh, generator okay i am sorry this is the um, uh, gas turbine and here okay, you can see the heavy exhaust here and this is the generator and if you will see here, we have put a accelerometer on the bearing housing of the generator and this was required. So, that we can and this was a case study which we are doing for the uh, from one of our sponsored uh, uh, sponsored projects by the DRDO for the Indian Navy, wherein uh, we are trying to see the feasibility of using motor current signature analysis for monitoring the health of a gas turbine. This is a small gas turbine in a test establishment. Oh, no, this is a replica of the actual gas turbine. Uh, this is one of the actual gas turbines which is used in a uh, uh, marine propulsion unit. And we have put an accelerometer here, a charge type accelerometer here to measure the vibration. So, that we would like to see whether the defect characteristics of the generator variation can be picked up by such a transducer. Okay. And then I will come to the associated problem, this is an, another view of this wherein we are uh, monitoring the accelerometer by an any uh, acceleration by an any axial variation monitoring. This is a another view of um, it is pretty noisy. So, that we have, have put in uh, earmuffs here, it is a very noisy test environment and you will see these are the shoots for the uh, exhaust of the gas turbine okay, because this is a stationary unit uh, otherwise you know this would have been normally used to power the, <coughs> the ship, but then we are only coupled it to drive the generator because for own generation of power in the, uh, in the ships they have what is known as the gas turbine generators. So, the uh, small gas turbines, uh, gas turbines have high power to weight ratio and they are very convenient in ships and this was being used to drive a generator. Okay. Now, what happens is another view in the naval establishment is we measured because this generator was delivering power okay, to a resistance bag. You know, whatever we generated power here, it went to a electrical load this is a uh, dissipative load on a, uh, by, by a, a resistances. So, onto this we put a hall effect sensor okay. and <coughs> this is the tectonics hall effect sensors put on one of the phases of the uh, load output load uh, and then we can correlate what, what is the defect in the generator and then in the turbine. Because the <coughs> principal idea behind MCSA is the current gets modulated 
by a load torque. Okay. So, in the case of a motor, driving a mechanical unit, <coughs> if this mechanical unit has a defect, <coughs> it is going to load the motor and then the motor current drawn will be loaded up. But same is true here, if <coughs> the like we, we had done in the case of a in the laboratory I had shown you uh, earlier that uh, we had a motor driving a gearbox which was in couple driving a generator. Okay, and then there is a load. Okay. So, <coughs> we had established that if there is a defect in the gearbox, motor currents get modulated, then we have measured it this way through an Hall effect sensor. Okay, we have demonstrated this earlier. Now, the other way also happens if there is a load defect in the gearbox, the generator. voltage which is generated by the generator will have ripples this is the time generator voltage and these ripples are at a frequency at the defect frequency. Of the mechanical unit and that is the turbine in our case. In fact, uh, this is a, a powerful uh, technique that any rotating machines I just showed you for the case of a turbine. So, any rotating mechanical device, if it is coupled with an generator the ripple frequencies are characteristics of the defect in the mechanical device. So, this is one of the important uh, observations and in fact, uh, our group at IIT Kharagpur has a patent on the same for the fact that any mechanical rotating device which is powering a generator, generator is going to generate a voltage and this voltage will not be clean, the voltage will have ripples. So, if somebody can understand and measure capture these ripples and understand the frequencies, we will see that they will are characteristics of the defect in the mechanical device. So, this becomes a very very powerful technique to find out defects in uh, gas turbines powering air torts, powering marine systems. So, these are very very powerful technique. Okay. 
uh, uh, this is one of the examples of the uh, view of one of the gas turbines, which is used for the marine propulsion system. This uh, the compressor, the low pressure compressor on the front of the gas turbine, this red cover is just a cover, because this has just come to the bay and this is in one of the uh, naval establishment units, where we are doing uh, measurements for our uh, project. And uh, this has a low pressure compressor, a high pressure compressor and the combustor and then the series of turbines and each one of them has sets of uh, blades. Okay. And so, how do you do the health monitoring of such gas turbines? Okay. So, the best place would be to keep vibration transducers along these uh, rings. Okay. You will see a lot of these rings and uh, braces are there because you obviously cannot access them. The challenges, instrumentation challenges for monitoring gas turbines are such. Because of high temperature, And those of you, we had uh, studied uh, that uh, we mount accelerometers using magnets, but these magnets are very, very soft and uh, they lose their properties. In fact, they crack. In fact, I myself have lost a lot of magnets uh, mounting accelerometers at locations uh, which were at high temperature. I realized later on once I had the cracked magnets. So, uh, they have to be withstand the high temperatures and nowadays, we have transducers which can go up to 600 degrees Celsius accelerometers, piezoelectric accelerometers. And they can be mounted permanently also, but again the problem here is you know these temperatures could be even higher than 600 degrees Celsius. So, certain that is one issue, uh, the temperature and then the, it, uh, the itself is how do you lay the cables and the location, location becomes a problem, okay. because I cannot be close to the bearings, because if you, if you look at the okay, this, this shafts. Okay, these bearings are somewhere close, so bearings are not accessible. Bearings are easily not accessible from bearings are not accessible from outside. So, this is again a challenge and as you know in all these machines the vibration reflects pretty well at the bearing locations and if I cannot access the bearings how do I measure them. Okay. So, uh, to some of the and that is why MCSA has become a good candidate. Next is we can use a lot of the NDT techniques. Of course, NDT techniques cannot be real time, but it is a good practice particularly for uh, gas turbines or turbines. Uh, we can do a quick ultrasonic inspection the internals of the turbines can be looked through visual inspection boroscoping okay. and of course, another technique people nowadays are used are on laser based measurements 
and the optical rotary encoders for what is known as detecting the instantaneous angular speed. These techniques are over the conventional vibration analysis. We will study about MCSA and NDTA in the later classes, but these are uh, techniques wherein this can be used to measure uh, and understand more about such gas turbines. But there are few other associated problem like in such turbines be it the particularly in hydraulic turbines. there is a limit to the maximum flow rate ok. Because if the flow rate increases and the velocities become so high because to conserve energy the pressures of the liquid if they fall below the vapor pressure. So, what is going to happen is this uh, vapors will be formed or bubbles will be formed in the pipeline. Inside the suction pipe ok and when this bubbles come up with time come up to the surface uh, to air pockets they will burst. So, they are like hammers high frequency hammer. and this is what is known as the cavitation. So, cavitation limits the operational pressure or flow rate of turbines and there has to be and this the cavitation goes undetected it is as if the inner walls will get pitting, pitting will be there and this bubbles because when they burst they will release energy and as if they are hitting and if this goes unnoticed they will weaken the structure and then lot of uh, uh, the surface will become weak it may eventually break. So, to monitor cavitations because they are high frequency we can always have the high frequency could be vibration monitoring. Now, it is uh, underwater piezoelectric accelerometers are available. are available ok. But the most important thing and this can be put on the pipeline and the most important is the cable the tribo electric low 
noise triboelectric cable and they have to be watertight with good silicone sealant. Sometimes you know this uh, cables are uh, more costlier than the piezoelectric accelerometers. Okay. So, we can monitor the uh, vibration of because of cavitation on the pipeline because if this goes unnoticed they will damage they will uh, pit the internals of the pipeline or the casing and then they will become weak and they will uh, maybe start to leak and then damage. Another important aspect which will go is the leakage. So, leakage has to be provided with seals, good seals. I think I need more papers. Okay. So, this uh, many things happen in chemical plants in the pump impeller if I have let us draw the blades. there could be particles which will get stuck sometimes not uniformly. So, these are particles which will get deposited ok. Because of this depo deposited particles they will be unbalanced. Okay. And this unbalance will again get detected at the bearing location. So, if I, if I if I have a shaft and then either there can be unbalance and uh, there can be a because of pitting. So, all these will give rise to again the same problem which you see in the frequency in the vibration signal a strong 1 x component. So, this can be one will lead to the other and uh, many a times uh, again in process plants they go for visual inspection and there are a lot of particularly in process plan a lot of sight windows glass the high pressure quartz glass sight windows are provided in such equipment to visually see from the outside uh, what is the condition cause and uh, associated with these impellers uh, getting defected bearing bearings uh, there will be load on the bearing and then misalignment. So, eventually again they will rub on the casing. This rub I told you in the case of the pumps is also severe in the case of turbines particularly gas turbines okay. and then this will again give rise to a lot of uh, problem and we discussed in a few of the classes earlier how this uh, rubs uh, can be detected by what is known as the non stationary signal analysis. Like wavelets or FFT. Okay. And uh, particularly associated not with hydraulic turbines, but with uh, steam turbines and gas turbines a serious 
problem is the bearing temperature and there are lot of control measure circuits available so that the gas turbine uh, the bearing temperatures are below the rated temperature of usually 75 degrees Celsius and many of you those who would have gone to power plant there are certain very important uh, parameters which are monitored and one of them obviously is the generator output speed because that output speed would, would correspond to the frequency of electrical power generation and that has to be strictly at the synchronous speed of 50 hertz and you know the effect if the speed falls below that there are lot of circuits you know lot of protection circuits in equipment which will shut them off if the supply frequency is less than 50 hertz because of the fact that many devices are synchronously many timing circuits are dependent on that supply frequency and so your machine would go haywire if these frequencies were less than the tolerated levels okay and uh, you would have heard of the grid failure because suddenly the load the machine shut down automatically the loads would again decrease and again that would lead, lead to again high speed increase so there will be a lot of frequency fluctuations so that is known as the hunting of the uh, machines and that has to be avoided okay and uh, because of this speed fluctuation because of the change in frequencies there will be a lot of torsional vibration associated torsional vibrations due to change in supply frequencies because the speed is changing speed is changing okay and i have seen many times particularly crankshafts of large machines structures failing because of such speed fluctuations so uh, many times in many plants input power frequency at least in India has to be maintained constant and 50 hertz because of the load poor power generation sometimes this fall but then again if the increase decrease so this will give rise to speed fluctuations and the speed fluctuations will introduce fatigue torque sorry torsional loads and lead to premature shaft failure so in a, in a power plant parameters monitored in a power plant from a machinery health point of view is of course the power generation frequency then the turbine rotational speed bearing vibration 
bearing temperature of course the steam consumption rate okay and of course the voltage etcetera is there but these are the parameters uh, which have to be monitored so that we will know whether the uh, turbine is stable or not and so on so in uh, conclusion pumps and turbines are important uh, important uh, machineries which are there in all power plants in all uh, nuclear power plants gas turbines per se are used for marine propulsion for captive small power plants for aircraft propulsion so they have their online condition mounting techniques by vibration motor current signature analysis is another new candidate which can be used for analyzing and monitoring such systems of course bearing temperature can be monitored as well and particularly for gas turbines which are used in aircrafts lot of ndt inspections are done in the maintenance workshop lot of on site internal inspection through techniques of visual inspection using boroscopes etc are done some of the ndt techniques you will uh, we will uh, discuss in the next uh, few classes down the road and all including mcsa but this was just to introduce you there are techniques of other than vibration monitoring like motor current signature analysis and ndt techniques which can be used to find out defects in machinery okay thank you